uh, PS Minister of Education invited guests. Um, our special guest has left, and I think he said he said um, what we've been saying all along. So I'll just keep my address very short because I've been saying that throughout this month. And I'm, let me start off by saying that every life matters. Let me say it by saying every woman matters. Because women, women take up the roles of parents as well. Every parent matters, and every member of the family matters, with every member in the nation matters. We've been going through a lot of um, tough months, and you all know what COVID has done to how COVID has impacted not only our country, but our people as well. How it has put pressure on our health systems, and the fact that um, COVID resulted in a massive loss of jobs. So obviously, a lot of families have been affected financially. We need a lot of psychosocial support uh, for our children as schools open. But apart from that, let us not forget women. You know, women make up a large uh, percentage of Fiji's. Like, I think about 49% of Fijian population is uh, women and girls. And uh, echoing the sentiments of the minister who spoke earlier, and what we are trying to promote is early detection saves life. And how do, you, how do we know, how, how can we detect our problems early is by giving ourselves some priority. I've always said women are so engrossed in looking after their families, so engrossed in earning for their families, providing for their families, and looking after the welfare of every member of the home. And in that, I believe that we fail to look after our health. I will say I believe we. We are all part of that. And equally part of that is our, the males in the family as well, the support that the male can render to the female members. It doesn't have to be the wife. It could be a daughter-in-law. It could be a daughter. Um, research and reality shows that um, breast cancer or any cancer doesn't spare other men and women. When it comes to breast cancer, yesterday we had a very good presentation by the, by the Risha of Fiji Cancer Society when we were at another event. And the realities of the disease, I mean, I think we need to show it to people. For some of us, it would be just breast cancer. But what breast cancer does to an individual is very rarely seen in public spaces. When you Google, you might see it. But the real cases in Fiji, what reaches the Fijian hospitals, what our surgeons see at a very last stage is of concern to us. That's why we say early detection saves life. Any disease for that matter should not be ignored. We should not procrastinate that, oh, I'll, I'll see the doctor tomorrow. I'll see the doctor tomorrow, and I'll see the doctor tomorrow. And by the time you see a doctor, the doctor says, you're on a final stage, OK? So as women, as women organizations, as advocates, awareness is what we are trying to create. And through awareness, we also try to raise some funds. Organizations uh, have their high tees and raise funds, and that money is presented to the Cancer Society, which society uses for awareness. And of course, um, if you still provide um, transport assistance, yes, you do. Transport assistance to those women who find it difficult to, to come to the hospital. Again, why is it so hard for women to reach hospitals? Why? That's a question we should ask, right? But, but, the, the, but the fact remains, like what Honorable Minister said, we must thank all organizations, and especially the Fiji Cancer Society, which has been doing a wonderful work over the past so many years. I've worked with them. And I hear survivors when they tell their stories. One organization they mention is the Fiji Cancer Society. So please, your funds that you raised, your efforts in awareness, is definitely needed to save lives. I'm sure the president will talk about the work that they do. And uh, we will definitely hear from our survivors as well. As a woman, I think the pain that a woman goes when she's diagnosed, first diagnosed, it hits you hard. You know when the doctor tells you, the word cancer is, is so scary. It's so scary. Can you imagine if, well, it, I, I can't imagine what I would do if I was told I have cancer, God forbid. It's, it's shocking and scary. And then when you have no support mechanisms, it's, it's more scary. It's like just dying there. So we don't want any women to lose lives. We urge families to support their women, the organizations that are working out to reach more women, 
I mean, for us, the Ministry of uh, Women, our REACH project will now be heavily involved in creating awareness. Not only now. I don't believe why it's, we celebrate it like a birthday. Like, it's our birthday, we're all excited. It's an event for October. Why can't it be an event for year round? We, we, we rely upon um, NGOs, we rely upon um, women's organizations. We have hundreds of women's organizations that are registered with the Department of Women, and we intend to use them. Every occasion that we get, every woman that you meet in your community, please be advocates of that. Let, let's not forget about this when uh, November comes. Or when December comes, we forget about November. It, it should be instilled in our children, in our families, the public spaces, needs to be flooded with these things. And one thing that I said, we need to show the reality of cancer. What does the disease look like? I don't know how many of you know what the disease actually looks like. I've, I've said we need to start talking boldly and frankly. At one time, breast used to be taboo. No, don't talk about breast in public. It's, it's a woman's issue. She's suffering, let us suffer. Don't talk about it. You know, our cultures were like that. But I think the biggest pro progress, uh, President, we've made is when we've started talking about it boldly. But we need to be more bolder than that. We need to fight this together. And let us make sure that women who reach out for assistance are, are given that assistance. Of course, I know there are some impediments in the, in the, the health system where some further, uh, what do you call that, um, treatments are needed. But if we detect it early, Ministry of Health, uh, government is um, allocating a good amount of money under Ministry of Health overseas treatment. So treatment that is not available here is available for women overseas. Most of our Fijian women travel to India, Australia, New Zealand. But you've got to understand treatment is very expensive. Huh? It's very expensive. It's very expensive. So if we detect it early, we, we are in a better place to treat it here. But when you reach stage three and stage four, you know it's going to ultimately lead to death. We don't want that. So I don't know whether you have a presentation or not, but I actually intend to make sure we get some presentations from help and probably load it up on, uh, on YouTube and social media. A lot of people are saving to say social media. And information just goes very fast there. Some TV ads, it, it may not look very pleasing, but it's not to disrespect anybody who's going through that. It's just to show people how scary it is. When somebody says you're gonna lose your limb because you are not controlling your diabetes, we are okay with that. But when you see somebody's limb being cut off and the problems that person goes through, then reality strikes us. Because all of us in the room, I'm sure, are thinking, it's not gonna be me. All of us, We're gonna, we, we would be praying hard. It's not gonna be me. But diseases such as this, they cut across every sector. It doesn't spare. And like Minister said, uh, it doesn't matter if your mother had it, or th you will have it if your family doesn't have it, so you will not have it. These are all myths. So first of all, we need to break that. And then there was talk about healthy lifestyle. Healthy lifestyle actually relates to all diseases. Too much salt, too much oil, too much sugar, too much alcohol, too much uh, smoking. And this cancer is also related to smoking. I, I, I read that. So lifestyle. We bring it upon ourselves, you know, by not choosing to live healthy, not choosing to exercise. All these messages are flicking across. Exercise daily. Eat healthy. Eat at the right time. Grow local. Fresh fruits. Avoid fatty foods, stuff like that. But we, we tend to overindulge, I understand. But if you know you are not very careful about your health, you can start now. And you can be an advocate in your organization, in your, in your women's groups, in your communities, in your families. So if we start that way, rather than starting here, if we start with families, our children, our schools, and everything, I'm sure we'll not reach a stage where women in Fiji or men in Fiji don't know about it. Whether it's cervical cancer, whether it's breast cancer, whether it's prostate cancer, cancer is a killer, right? So I'll leave you with these words. Cancer is a killer. And I must um, put on record the losses that we have done, women who have died, women who have survived, you know, they're still with us. Women are still struggling. And I think there are a lot of women who, don't, who are not aware about this. So let's hype up the awareness. Let's reach homes through media organizations, through individuals, through our ministry's work, and reach every other woman out there. 
we will be able to save them if they reach the hospitals earlier and not late. So early detection, detection saves life, healthy living saves life, and just being aware about things and prioritizing your health. Every woman should prioritize herself. Not rush here, rush there, look after this one, look after that one, cook and clean and we're just all over the place, right? But what about us? So the spouse support is very important. The family support is very important. Despite all the challenges we are going through, COVID has come, it'll go. It'll go. Challenges will come and go. But please ensure that you prioritize your health. Okay, so I will leave you with that. I'm sure we have a lot to hear from the president. But please thank you once again for turning up in numbers. I think this is one of the biggest uh, morning teas. And short notice uh, to my peers and the team, thank you very much for always being there to organize things that benefits uh, our women, children, and everybody. So yes, thank you. Director Women, you and your team, thank you. And all of you, thank you very much for being here. And please keep advocating for breast cancer in your daily lives. Okay? And I'm sure we will be able to save a lot of lives. So thank you very much and God bless you. I only got told about this because I'm the Ministry of Women's neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose the Minister Akbar is actually practicing love thy neighbor. <laughs> um, ladies and gentlemen, um, Honorable Minister, Honorable Assistant Minister, uh, President, P.S. Pulvanaka, very good morning to all of you. Unfortunately, I won't be able to stay for too long. I've got uh, to see if we can organize our uh, protocols so that the borders can open on the, uh, around the 1st of October so we can actually get some, some more economic activity happening. But, you know, just, uh, just a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, with COVID, I think a lot of things that we do have taken a back seat and, you know, in all honesty, because we've been so busy trying to deal with COVID and all the necessary things that need to be done, we've actually forgotten that it was Pinktober. You know, I've even, I even forgot that it's Movember's coming up. But, you know, this is the world that we live in now, but we must never forget. And I think it's such an important thing that we do have Pinktober and it's actually, uh, uh, we have functions like these to raise some awareness. And I wanted to today uh, uh, shout out and say thank you very much to the Fiji Cancer Society uh, that have done a phenomenal, tremendous amount of work in Fiji in raising the awareness in terms of cancer. Um, I was uh, just briefly going through the newspapers this morning and I, I just saw one paper which actually published uh, on, on, a, on a full page, it said about myths about uh, breast cancer and facts. And I think these are the things that are important. You know, it's very simply said, you know, and some of the myths that were spoken about was that, you know, I don't have a family history, I won't get it. Well, it's wrong, you know, and about tra uh, traditional medicine that may help, you know, it may, but it's not been proven scientifically. And about men that, uh, that might get affected, it's not a very well-known fact, but it needs to be publicized. Even men get affected by it. I'm fortunate. I, I live with my, uh, my family, my, my late mum, always made sure that everybody was well aware of these things. And so you learn about these things as you grow up, and it's important that every parent teaches their child to make sure that you you know, uh, regularly get checkups done. Whether you're male or female, it doesn't really matter. It can affect everybody. And uh, I think it's such an important thing that we acknowledge uh, the kind of work that the Fiji Cancer Society has done in assisting all Fijians and actually raising the awareness. And uh, so if I may at this time and in public, I'll say it, if you ever need any assistance from the Fiji Motorcycle Association, let us know, because we'll ride for you and we will raise money for you if, if it's ever needed. Happy to do so. I am the, the patron, so I can actually say that. But uh, to the Honourable Minister and to all the staff and everybody here present, it's, uh, we will do ours shortly. I think uh, we obviously can't do big, large functions and are happy to be here. And I think it's, uh, it's important that uh, all of you, when you do go home, you know, it's not something uh, that should be hidden. Uh, from what I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, but I think 70% of cancer patients are detected too late, and that is too large a number. So it's a matter of everybody, f you know, it's not something that should be, of course it's frightening, but it's something that you need to get checked. You know, if you go too late, it really is too late. And 70% is actually a very large percentage in terms of uh, uh, the numbers of people who have just realized too late. 
it's always advantageous to check. And to all the men, you know, it's important that you do. And cancer takes very different shapes and forms and etc. And, you know, uh, always ensure that you actually get checked. Take the initiative. Don't be frightened to go and get tested. You know, whenever you do are going for an annual health check, you should always make sure that you uh, get get tested. Um, it's important. It's important for your sake. It's important for your family's sake. At the end of the day, and the earlier you catch it, the better it is. You know, and medication is improving year on year. At the end of the day, for all the different ailments that we have around the world, and um, I think in Fiji we have a small population in comparison to the rest of the world. But just keeping everybody aware is a very important aspect of our lives and we shouldn't forget. You know, and I have seen, we have actually visited as a ministry, we've been to the hospital to see some cancer patients and it's tough. It really is tough. That's why I want to take my hat off to all the health workers who actually uh, assist uh, in the hospital and also, uh, uh, again, from the Fiji Cancer Society who are always there in times of need for these people. Because it is a tough exercise when you do get it. Uh, so with those few words, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a wonderful day. Great to see everybody in pink uh, and all the uh, organizations that are represented here. Thank you for being here also. Honorable Minister, thank you for inviting us. We were all um, busy at PM's residence last night and uh, Honorable Minister, I think, had too many bowls of grog. So. <laughs> but thank uh, Honorable Sister Minister, I, you also, thank you very much for the invitation. I hope you have a lovely day. Uh, please enjoy the cake. But always remember, Everybody in the family needs to be aware, you know, even our children, our young girls, etc. You know, we, we are fortunate that our health system allows us to actually get ourselves tested, you know, and it's not too far away. It's, you're a shout away from a hospital or if you're not too sure about it, the Cancer Society always helps. There's a lot of paraphernalia that actually is given out in terms of awareness, etc. But it's one of the most important tools that we have to ensure that you live a clean, healthy life. And, you know, and plus other things that affect it, you know, you need to, a lot, a lot of research, ladies and gentlemen, also needs to be done about your eating habits. You know, we may get these things because of certain food items, etc., all that kind of stuff. So nowadays, everybody's savvy uh, in terms of the, the internet to find out what's right and what's wrong. A lot of the times, it's sensational stuff that's wrong. But uh, do some homework at home. Make sure you let your children know. Thank you very much. Now I Good morning, everyone. The Honourable Minister, Assistant Minister, President of the uh, Fiji Cancer Society, Madam PS, the Media Corp, invited guests, and my, uh, my dear friends, my family. I'm humbled this uh, morning by um, the invite that uh, we've received. And um, as an educator, as someone who has been teaching for the past 21 years, I feel very small in my corner there when I hear the, um, the Honorable uh, Minister for Tourism and our host this morning address how it's very important for a mother, for a woman, that you take time out for yourself. I will begin on that. There were so many things I had planned out this morning. And I was asking the Holy Spirit, Father, guide me, give me something, give me something to begin on. And they both gave me the beginning this morning to all our women, not only our women, our men who are here. At many times, you see us walking around, we carry the weight of the world on these two shoulders. We handle everything. But how many times do you turn around and you ask your partner, do you ask your mother or your sister or your friend or your workmate, hey, how are you doing? You don't look your normal self. Would you like me to, uh, is there something that you'd like me to do for you? Let me begin with, I've been asked that question for so many times. In 2018, when I was posted down to Queen Victoria School, that's where I've frequently met the Madam Minister, the, I was blessed, I was really blessed that um, my students stopped and they noticed that something was amiss. 
they noticed, these young boys noticed that something was amiss. So um, without any um, them being children, they ran to their um, school nurse, Nurse Tuka, and he said, my friend, after this interhouse, we usually have our interhouse at the National Stadium. After this interhouse, you're going to come with me and we're going to have a few tests taken. It's the friends who took the first step for us because we thought we didn't have the time. I went, I had the test, I had the results out, and it was positive. I had cancer, and not only I had it in the first stage, I had it in stage three. But all it felt like then was a size of a five cents, size of a lump, painless. It didn't interrupt work at all. Dr. Turangaba had told me right there and then, we will have to begin treatment soon. You'll have to come in for chemo, you'll have to go in for the operation. Ladies and gentlemen, that shook my world. You think we carry the world? But when the doctor, when the expert tells you things like that, how do you handle that? So I ran away from the hospital. I continued with work as normal. I decided my health was not important. I had my Form 7 students, which I needed to see through. I had a target my principal expected me to surpass. That was more important. This little lump was painless. I still could handle it. Us being women thinking we can handle everything. The year that we won the deans from Lawanga Park, Dr. Chosese met me again amidst all the celebration. And while getting the boys together, he turned around because he was the assigned doctor at, by the Fiji Secondary School, and he said, hey, you didn't come in. Sir, after this, please, not now. But the boys caught what he said. They heard what he said. In 2020, last year, February 18, after having a very good time with my female colleagues who decided she's really not normal, she's, she's coming to work, but things are not the same. They visited me that night at home. I lived with my mom in the government quarters. They visited me and they were sharing. That Thursday I went to sleep. The Friday morning I didn't wake up. So my principal and my male colleagues took it upon themselves to take me to Korobo Hospital, from Korobo Hospital to the CWM Hospital, where I had my operation, where I had my chemo treatment. I had it all done locally. And that again, Madam Ministers, and to the media call, we have everything available locally. There's a lot of talks of uh, us going abroad for this. It's all available locally. I am speaking from experience, I am speaking from a stand where I thought my health was not important, where I thought I would wait until the holidays, then get myself treated. But lo and behold, God used me as an instrument so that I would tell the other women in the nation, in the world, in the Pacific, that help is available locally. I received my chemo, all four chemo treatments here. I had my operation done in Fiji. And by June 1st, my doctor cleared me to resume work. And I've been on my feet since then. So many times I've been asked, so many times I've been asked, didn't you know we were sick? Didn't you know that something was wrong? I told the doctors, I told Dr. Lily, Dr. Lily Wanga, our pain therapist, ma'am, I hardly go to hospital. I don't even have a hospital card. I've never been sick. The only time I will take leave from school is when I have to attend 
bereavement leave or to attend a certain function. But to fall sick, I'll be on the forefront of all sporting activities. But your health matters. The lifestyle we choose to live, how we choose to live our lives, that is your choice, yes. But it's also your choice to pause, look at yourself, examine yourself, because early detection saves. By the time I had my uh, operation, before I had my operation, they were going to send me home from Korobo Hospital because it was beyond what they could manage. As they were going to send me home to await the Almighty's call. But the Almighty had a different plan for me. He was going to use me for this. And yes, ma'am, we do not only commemorate it in October. I commemorate it all throughout because I've been given a second chance to tell, to share with everyone in Fiji that your women matters. As, as you have your daughters, you tell your daughters these things so when they grow up empowered, they know there are people to turn to. I thank the Fiji Cancer Society. Thank you so much for providing the transport, comfortable. I have a driver that I always, uh, that always picks me up from QBS. As soon as I get into his uh, car, I fall off to sleep. It's like coming in the car, and he's so, um, they are, they're so caring. They give you the best treatment. His name is Ravi. So as soon as I see Ravi coming down to QBS, hey, you haven't been taking your medication. Yes, Ravi, we need to uh, replenish my medicine. Can we please go? So Fiji is blessed. We have the hands, we have the expertise, we have the organizations who look after us. It really goes back to me. If it's to be, it's your choice. You're getting treated, you're getting healed, you're being given a second chance. I wouldn't have been standing here today had it not been for the persistent doctor that kept chasing me all over the place that kept running after me all over the place. You need to be treated, you need to be treated. And the students who, when it was their inter-house, when I was lying down, when I was in uh, the CWM hospital, they rushed in numbers to donate blood. They had to turn away those who had yet to turn 18 because they needed the parental consent. <laughs> and they had to turn away those who um, who did not know their blood, their blood group. But they said, just give it for our teacher. Okay, it's the lives that you touch. We become selfish when you don't look after yourself. Because when you go, you leave motherless children behind. You leave a partner who will miss your company. And I said, I stand here this morning. I'd like to pay tribute to a colleague, to a fellow teacher who we are probably on her way to her burial home at Sawani village in Netasiri, Roi Baraivembe. She is um, a mother of four, four boys she lives behind. She fought, and she was treated. It was just a bit too late for her. So ladies and gentlemen, as the minister had alluded, all lives met. I'm not so proud standing this morning because I left it to the last stage, but as God has given me a second chance and I'm here this morning, I'll repeat that last statement again. Spare a moment or two with your partner, with your wife, with your children and your daughters. Ask them that question. Take them by the hand. Treatment is free at the hospital. And we have the best doctors and the best volunteers at the Fiji Cancer Society to still give you that treatment. I thank the Ministry of Education for allowing me back into the force. I've been teaching and I'm eagerly, before leaving QBS yesterday to come down for this, we had a massive cleanup campaign because the Ministry of Health has sent out a very long checklist to get ourselves organized before our boys come in. And we are so excited to get the boys back in. 
and I'm so excited to see them and prepare them for what the world has in store for them. And I'm glad to be here to see them through because these Form 7s are my Form 3s when I was first posted to QBS. And I'm glad I get to finish the year with them. Thank you. Come here. Bulwinaka, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, Honorable Assistant Minister, Madam PS, friends, stakeholders, ladies and gentlemen that are invited here today. It's, uh, it has always been my pleasure to be accorded the opportunity to speak. Um, I also have an, another engagement this morning and had requested for the other board members to be present here today to, to address you. Unfortunately, they've all got their own tasks to attend to. And so privileged to be here representing the board members, uh, the management and staff at um, Fiji Camp Society, our trustees, our fighters, our survivors. Angela, thank you so much for your very touching story this morning. Uh, we've heard from so many people, um, and their stories are different, but there's the whole meaning behind it that we need to capture. Uh, every time when October um, arri arrives. Traditionally, October is the month that we remember uh, women and just quite recently men that are journeying with cancer. Um, at Fiji Cancer Society, I'll, touch, I'll just give you a brief snapshot of what we do at the Fiji Cancer Society. I uh, appreciate the statements that have been done here today by the minister, uh, Mr. Coyer as well, uh, alluding to all of the work that we continue to do, and more so to do with you, the individuals that are here today. With respect to these celebrations that we continue to do every October, one question I've always asked the audience is, it's a good thing to be present to support the month of Pinktober, but another thing is to be a responsible adult to get yourselves checked. Very true in what uh, Madam Minister had said in uh, late detection, you know, early detection saves life, and that is a true fact. We've had uh, Angela talk about her stepping away when she was actually diagnosed uh, initially. We've had a lot of people who've actually denied, you know, when, when they've been diagnosed and they've been told that they have cancer, they deny this. And so they go around looking for a lot of other treatments. And when the case has actually gone very bad, then they come running to the doctors. And when they don't get seen by the doctors immediately, there's always complaints and objections to the work that the Ministry of Health does, but we've only got ourselves to blame. We continue to do the advocacy work, the create awareness work, and, and all we ask from the generous audiences is to please adhere to the request that we do. By going and getting yourself checked doesn't mean, a lump does not only mean that you have cancer. It could be some other illness that's related to uh, could be diabetes or could be some other illness that could be treated. Cancer, ladies and gentlemen, is a curable disease if detected early. Usually when you hear the word cancer, the first thing that comes to the person's mind is um, it's a death certificate. No, it isn't. If you get treated early, if you get detected early, cancer is not a death sentence for you. But unfortunately here in Fiji it seems that people only come when it's too late for them. The doctors do the best that they can. And so we acknowledge also the work of the doctors and the nurses. And as I said, uh, a snapshot of what Fiji Cancer Society does, we've been around for the past 28 years. And we thank organizations such as yourselves and every other organization that have contributed to the work that we continue to do. Your contributions enhances further the work that we do in creating awareness, advocacy work all over the country. We've also contributed towards uh, a backlog of surgeries. You may have read in the newspapers that the medical team, the surgical team in, in, at the hospital will only operate on, on uh, the uh, very serious cases. So we've had a backlog of uh, cancer cases that needed to be operated on. And so they've approached this uh, Fiji Cancer Society and we've allocated over $10,000 for them to be working overtime 
the surgical team to be working overtime just to address this uh, backlog of surgical cases. Otherwise, then, this wouldn't have happened. Fortunate for those that have insurance who are able to be flown abroad to get, in, you know, get treated. We hear from Angela this morning of treatment that's been done locally. And we are very fortunate to have here, here, her with us here this morning. We have uh, a lot of survivors who've survived for more than 10 years because they've actually gone through their phases of um, chemo, chemotherapy and, and, and been treated, you know, treated and, and, and are now healthy. But what I'd like, like to also emphasize here, people, that Fiji Cancer Society is there to help every individual. For you that are here today, if you know of a friend, a family member who's not been given this treatment, please have them registered with us. We are supporting those that, are being, that have been registered. And for those who haven't been registered, to please make an effort, just, just call the Fiji Cancer Society and say, I've got a family member, I've got a friend, I've got a colleague, I've got a, a, a personal friend that I'd like to introduce. All we need is to do, all we do is we just take your details. And as you've heard from Angela, the treatment, the services that we provide here, transportation, for as far as you leave, wherever you may be, the taxis, the boat services, the plane services we provide to bring you over for your medical treatment. We also provide medication where it's not available on the free medical drug list at the hospital. I've told the team at Fiji Cancer Society that no patient should ever go home empty-handed. The funds that you raise today and the funds that you continue to raise to support Fiji Cancer Society is what Fiji Cancer Society is, is actually doing. We're also going to the extent of uh, providing visas and passports for those patients that don't have the funds to get this organized when they're being told that they need to be evacuated. We've even had patients lying on their, on their hospital beds who don't even have wheels. We've linked up with the uh, Fiji Public Trustees to actually get the wheels done. And so work at the Fiji Cancer Society just does not stop at just providing uh, medication only. We do home visitations as well. And you'd be surprised at the amount of patients in palliative care right now that have been uh, attended to. And so we thank you all for your generosity, your continued support of Fiji Cancer Society, which enhances the work that we do. If you should have any queries in regards to the work to do, please just pick up the phone and call Fiji Cancer Society. There's a team out there that is able to help you uh, facilitate your, your needs, your requirements, and whatever questions you have. We have a medical team that is working there with us. We've just acquired a building that's right next to us where we're actually going to be um, having a clinic done, uh, set up as well. We know that there's been a lockdown at the hospital, so it's quite difficult for patients to be visiting the oncology ward. So this building that we've also acquired is to also facilitate uh, clinics. And so when, when you hear of teams going out on the advocacy and awareness programs, please make the effort to also visit this. I also represent WOWS Kids Fiji. And so we try to do all of these in, in a, um, uh, where we include children and adults as well. Uh, so my humble ask this morning, please, ladies and gentlemen, Look around your environments, look around your neighborhoods, look around your workplaces. If you ever hear of a patient who's currently journeying on their own, please introduce them to Fiji Cancer Society because we'd be happy to help. A very fitting statement that we've got here on the banner, supporting the fighters, admiring the survivors, honoring the taken, and never ever giving up hope. No one fights alone. Thank you very much.